Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Old Metal Maker. Today, wanted to talk to you about vacuums and vacuum pumps. So, here I have a uh, super simple vacuum chamber that I threw together. You can see how I made it super, super easy. Just a uh, fitting threaded into there, obviously a gauge. This is just a cheapy, cheapy gauge off Amazon. It's not accurate whatsoever. Uh, but it still gives you an indication of where your vacuum is. Now this is a uh, big sheet of polycarbonate here. This was by far the most expensive part of the chamber. Got a closed cell neoprene. I don't even know where this freaking came from. But uh, <laughs> this might have been for sound deadening or something. But a uh, closed cell neoprene sheet as the gasket works pretty damn well. And then a big thick stainless steel bowl from uh, Marshalls or Kohl's or, or one of them cheapy places, maybe home goods where the wife likes. Now the nice thing about the neoprene is it's a lot easier than trying to make your own gasket with silicone or something of that nature. You can usually get neoprene in pretty large sheets and it works pretty damn well. You probably won't be able to hold super high vacuum applications with neoprene but it seems to work pretty well for this uh, pretty light duty application. And what I'm using this for is degassing uh, rocket propellants, ammonium perchlorate composite propellants. She seems to work pretty well. Sucks pretty hard. You can uh, expand marshmallows, pop balloons, all, <laughs> all the typical good shit. But in order to do that sucking, you need something to suck with. <laughs> so what I have here, that's showing up like shit on my lighting that bad well anyway what I got here is an ancient Welsh duo seal vacuum pump now I had this thing for probably well over a decade but just recently brought it back to life and when I say brought it back to life it literally just needed a new belt now this thing's probably sat dormant for got on the order of uh, 30 years I know I've had it at least a decade and haven't touched it and the uh, the owner before that had passed away and uh, I was fortunate enough to inherit some of his tools. Pretty damn nice pump here. You can see it's set up for, uh, I think he was probably using this for car uh, HVAC because you got the little Schrader valve and the quarter inch uh, connection. Now interestingly this pump also has what's called a gas ballast. and I'm not totally sure on exactly what the heck this does, but from my bitter reading, it seems to help keep the vacuum pump oil clean by, I think, allowing like volatiles and stuff that get mixed into it to vent. And uh, I'm not sure exactly how that works. If one of you guys knows uh, how the heck these things work, please uh, leave a comment so, so I can figure this damn thing out because I, I really don't know how the heck to use it. But I know this thing does pull one heck of a vacuum. And that's even with the ancient dirty oil in this. Let's see if you can see the oil. It's gnarly. Not even a filter on the cap. So <laughs> if you're running this thing overnight and walk out into the shop in the morning, everything's going to be covered in oil mist, I would imagine. So uh, definitely going to have to put some sort of breather on that, some filter breather. But look at the color of this oil. Whew, gnarly. But it is still held uh, right in the middle of the oil level all these years. It's definitely time for an oil change though. Now the reason I brought this monster of a pump back into service is because my other two pumps couldn't pull the vacuum good enough for degassing resins. So I got this uh, surplus medical I think it's for uh, like an aspirator pump and uh, you, you can pick these things up pretty damn cheap on the surplus market and it actually it seems to have a, a half decent gauge on it at least better than that one and then my other one is a bit of a monster so this here is my other vacuum pump which I've been using for many years and when I first got it it pulled a pretty damn good vacuum but over the years I've abused and neglected it 
and uh, unfortunately it just doesn't pull as good a vacuum as it used to so it's not really useful for degassing propellants I think there were a couple times I sucked brake fluid through the thing <laughs> and uh, probably acid fumes and all that stuff so I imagine the uh, cylinders or piston rings in here are pretty well shot this is the uh, double piston type compressor also busted the fan blades off of her and uh, yeah she's a little out of balance still does work though it's uh it's it's a decent vacuum but not quite what I need so first order of business I definitely need to change the oil on this thing uh, I did test it and it's still pulling a good vacuum even with uh, <laughs> probably 30 40 year old oil in it and of course I did want to run it even though that oil is probably so old and sludgy I did want to run it just so I could get all the contaminants kind of in suspension and when I drain it I should be able to clean it out I'm probably gonna cycle it a few times just to try to get the oil in here as clean as possible and what I have for the oil is this uh, Dairyland brand vacuum pump oil and this is used to suck the teat milk out of cows and or goats or whatever whatever your pleasant teat milk happens to be alright so we're <laughs> ready to empty the old oil out hopefully you guys will be able to get a good view of this I'm just gonna run it real quick just to get any uh, particles suspended right, she's definitely pulling a vacuum there and let's try giving this thing a change oh wow that was on there oh ho, ho. oh Jesus, your vacuum oil should not look like that. Now since it uh, had the correct charge in it, I'm just going to see how much oil comes out and replace however much we uh, took out. Look at that freaking vacuum oil. <laughs> oh my god. Never should used vacuum oil look like used automotive oil. Wow. That's, uh, that's probably 30 years of neglect right there. Because you got to remember this, uh, the oil chamber is also open to atmosphere through the cap. So it was probably gathering all sorts of contaminants out of the air. So one thing you want to keep in mind with these vacuum chambers is implosions. Now you can see I spec'd out a polycarbonate for this lid here because the amount of force that's exerted on this thing is massive and that's also why I went with a domed bowl because sphere I mean it's not quite perfect it's got a flat bottom but uh you know that's basically your strongest uh, shape what is this 12 inches yeah so uh, just double check my math there so this thing's got about Considering atmospheric pressure at a 14.6, 14.7, this thing is like 1,600 pounds, 1,700 pounds on it. I mean, uh, a massive amount of force is, you know, literally, what is it, 68 miles of atmosphere just pushing down on this. So you got to consider your, uh, your materials when you put together a vacuum chamber, otherwise they will implode. And let's see what kind of vacuum we can pull. Now my crappy little pump can only get down to about 25. And my good one used to be able to pull maybe 28, something like that. Now this gauge isn't the most accurate in the world, but it's uh, decent enough. So let's see here. Sounds like a witch is getting exercised. God, is this thing freaking heavy. You can see the switch. <laughs> the the uh, insulation has been worn through and the, uh, the original switch housing cracked. So there's live wires exposed and all three wires are completely exposed in that area. <laughs> I did put a new belt on her too. The, uh, <laughs> the old belt was a bit flaky so uh, what is this a 34 inch circumference belt so I, I ordered an AX32 
So I've uh, got the ribbing for her pleasure. Really curious to see if we can boil some water in there though. Well, unfortunately, no matter where I go with the camera, there's a glare. So, we'll just have to live with that. See if we can get enough sucking power. Holy shit! <laughs> it's doing it! We are boiling water at room temperature. My old pump could not do that. Pretty damn cool. Now I think if we were to leave this run long enough, we would actually be able to freeze the water. Because what the vacuum pump's doing, it's essentially acting as a heat pump. We're drawing out the, the hottest molecules, so the molecules with the most energy out of the water and leaving behind only the ones with the least energy. So if we were to pull this long enough, I think the water would actually freeze or at least cool down significantly. Well, the water's been boiling for a while and no freezing as of yet. So I'm gonna remove vacuum. Take a look. Oh, it's definitely cooled down quite a bit. <laughs> That's crazy. So if I let it go long enough, it definitely would freeze. But uh, you can see condensation forming on it. Pretty wild. But uh, yeah, I'm not trying to burn out my pump. Probably still needs another oil change or two before I can run it continuously. So she pulls a good vacuum. That'll be perfect for degassing composite propellants. Beauty. Well, I don't think this would even count as a vacuum pump video if we didn't try some marshmallows. The only ones I got are these tiny little jobbies. But, uh, should work. Alright, let's pull vacuum. Probably at about 28 inches of mercury right now. It looks like they're kind of no longer expanding, which is to be expected. I guess all the gas is kind of out of them at this point. But they should pull a pretty good shrinky dink when we uh, let air atmosphere back in. Look at the level of doming this uh, polycarbonate sheet. What is this, half inch? Yeah, half inch polycarbonate sheets is strong stuff. Look at the way it's flexing inwards. All that weight just bearing down on it. Unbelievable. That is why I put the, the holes off to the side. I wanted the minimum amount of force on it because obviously in the center you're going to have your maximum load and as you get further out to the edges that load is going to taper off. So don't drill your holes directly in the center. All right, let's see how our Michelin men friends uh, fare here. With vacuum removed. It should shrink up pretty good. <laughs> they look like vertebrae. <laughs> That's funny. like the lottery. Wow, those things shrunk. <laughs> Look at that. That is pretty neat. You know it would be awesome? Freeze. Yeah, I could definitely do some freeze drying with this thing. The, the harder part's going to be the, the cooling and heating apparatus. I'm gonna have to look into that. Maybe we'll try uh, freeze dries and freeze dries and freeze drying some stuff. If you're looking to lose a finger, this is probably the machine for you. <laughs> Made back before the days of uh, OSHA compliance, where losing a finger, you know, lab tech losing a finger, no big deal. As as long as it could pull a vacuum, 
That's what they wanted. So I might have to uh, maybe cobble together a belt guard for this, just in the interest of a uh, little bit of added safety. Not trying to uh, snap off my fingers. That would be a, br a brutal way to maybe not snap off a finger, but that mangle you're pretty good, I'd imagine. Supposedly you can get down to one micron, but uh, I think given this thing's age and condition, <laughs> I wouldn't be expecting that of it. It can do some sucking, but not sucking that hard. Now this, this pump is godly old and could probably use a rebuild, but unfortunately the, uh, the rebuild kits range from 250 for the minor repair kit to about 500 for the major repair kit. And I don't need crazy level vacuums, you know, uh, just, just enough to degas propellant, that sort of stuff. I'd love to do a teardown and show you guys how this works. It's basically a rotary vein, uh, two-stage rotary vein pump. So if you watch AVE's videos and you've seen him take apart the uh, air tools, there's basically the rotor and the veins. It's the same concept in here, but it's just doing the opposite job. And that's, that's how you're creating your vacuum. Probably a little higher tolerance, I'd imagine. All right, well, I've probably bored everyone here to death, so... <laughs> No more suffering. Please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, click that little dingleberry next to subscribe so you can get notified when I post, drop a comment. Also, if you're a fan of this channel, a couple ways you can support this channel. Uh, one, I have a Patreon set up. The other, in the description below, I will leave an Amazon affiliate link where you can save that as your homepage and it'll help the channel every time you shop. Won't cost you a dime other than the money you're already spending on Amazon. So, appreciate any help there. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a great one. Much like every man's dream woman, this thing will just about suck a golf ball through a garden hose. <laughs>